Guys, we're here to talk about Grassroots today, your latest film, which is a political comedy about uh, local elections, a race for them. Is that what it's about? Yeah, I Jeez. think it is. Oh. I thought we were here to talk about the new American Pie reunion DVD. Oh, damn. Well, let's talk about that. No, 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 no. <laughs> so this political comedy that you're doing. Yes. Well, it's uh, actually based on a true story, isn't it? And I wondered, therefore, what stage did you actually get to meet the real-life guys that you're bringing to the big screen, both of you? Yeah, different stages, clearly. For, for the, we, He's got his answer. I, mine, mine is, uh, I, I met Phil after we had already commenced filming. So, so we were a couple of weeks in, and, and I met Phil, he came to set, and I, I, I'll never forget, it was this wonderful compliment he gave me. It's really a compliment to Stephen, but he told me, he said, you know, I was watching you do your scene, and I feel like you really have me down. Like, you really, like, I really, like, believe it. Like I, and what was striking about that, what was amazing about that is, is that I wasn't trying to do him, you know? Uh, and Stephen was adamant from the beginning that that uh, we weren't trying to, you know, do an impression. We weren't trying to, you know, that 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 the real Phil Campbell and and his book that he wrote and and the stories in there were sort of a, a template that we were going to build upon and we were going to create our own characters. And but I think that's just it's it's a reflection of of you know Stephen knew Phil and Stephen knew what he wanted to get from the story and from the character and he directed me in a way that when Phil Campbell came to set he was like oh I totally get it but I thought that was interesting so I imagine you had a little bit more history with Phil a little bit different I mean first of all just uh, Phil was a kid in his 20s um, did this campaign sort of for all the reasons the movie talks about which is not all the right reasons he'd been fired and he just was angry and he thought what the hell I'll throw this crazy guy up in the faces of the Seattle politicians who I don't like you know so he comes into it for all the wrong reasons he did in his 20s he wrote this book he's a journalist so he wrote this book the book had a small life didn't didn't really didn't do that well fine it was called Zion check for president I, I would have right away told him change the title <laughs> um, but so so he didn't ever expect anything to happen and a um, friend of mine at Nation Books which is where I, I discovered the book so sort of just with along with those seven or eight other books gave me that book to read and that was the book that fascinated me I think he just thought it would be the seven copies that were sold one of which was on his shelf would be the end of it um, and that was sort of it. So all of a sudden, when I talked to him and said I'd like to turn it into a movie, I mean, I've made a bunch of movies. Um, I hadn't made a feature film at that point for a few years, but I had made a bunch of movies, been doing a lot of TV. I don't think he really believed anything was ever going to come of it, but there was some glimmer of he's done this before, it might happen again, but I don't believe it. And I don't think, I mean, imagine you or, you know, one of your friends because you're in the media, but someone who has never been involved with Hollywood or movie making, someone comes to you and says, that little book you wrote, we want to turn it into a movie. So it was, it was fun working with him, because I knew right away I'm going to turn this into a movie. And it took a while. Um, we worked on the script, and I love having people involved with the process and pulling them into this weird journey of movie making and, and all of it, which is pretty gritty a lot of the time. Um, so he, I had him work on the script. At one point, he wanted to rewrite the script, because everyone thinks they can also <laughs> write scripts. And um, and I did pull one or two things out of the the script, including the scene that no, no, the scene that he saw you no, that's not true. but but he did. So I was working on capturing his inflection, who he was, what he was like. And he's a very sort of obsessed obsessed kind of guy. Um, yeah. But then I got to follow him all the way along, and then um, met Grant right before we started shooting. Um, and I talked with him on the phone and emailed back and forth. I was a little worried because he's kind of a wild character. And Grant turned out to be just spectacular. Um, but they're two very different people. I mean, Grant's in Mexico City and with a bookstore now. I mean, very different. And Phil's in New York. Yeah, it's interesting you're talking about how, um, how Phil, reasons, sort of reasons why Phil came, Jason's character came on board um, to, to do this campaign. And it's interesting in a way that he kind of got dragged in by his friend, didn't he, to mm -hmm. do it. It had at a time when obviously he'd lost his job and stuff. And I wondered if you, either of you had ever been in that situation before where a kind of friend has dragged you into a situation you've kind of been carried along by it. Hmm. Well, Stephen dragged me into doing this movie, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> 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 uh, 
I, that's the only thing I can think of. Um, oh boy, I mean, there's 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 a few regrettable uh, late nights uh, in, <laughs> in Vegas that I can think of. A couple of poor decisions. Come on, just one more stop. Uh, but you know, things like this. I, I you know, I. I I, I, I don't I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't, you know, gr Phil was at a real, and, and Grant, at a real sort of crossroads, you know, and um, I think, uh, you know, I, I've certainly been at crossroads. I think in a way I'm at one now, um, but I, I've been, um, I haven't had that kind of, I think, relationship where I've been sort of reluctantly pulled in only to find myself uh, enlightened, which is what happened with Phil, you know. Um, boy, timing is everything, huh? It really... You know, it's interesting because I think when you look at his character carefully, the most critical thing that's happened, that happens to him is he's fired. This is a really committed journalist, and Phil is a very committed journalist. And he was working for The Stranger, which the people in Seattle know is a, a kind of... It's actually become a much better paper or a much a much better known paper in Seattle than it was at the time. So he kind of felt like he was at the bottom of the barrel. And then they get fired from that was devastating. And I think one of the things the movie's also exploring is that a lot of people get fired nowadays. You know, a lot of people are out of work. A lot of people are unemployed. And that psychological effect, which we played with in a relatively humorous way, but generally doesn't feel humorous when it's happened. I was fired once off a movie, and it was devastating, devastating. And I think the reaction of, of Phil's, of your character, is less about being pulled into it by, by Grant, which I think there's an element of, but more about revenge, more about um, wanting to, to just, he, couldn't, he wasn't going to get work, he wasn't going to get any of that. It was a way of sort of saying, screw you, which is not the way it's described, those two words are not the words that are used in the movie, but those are the words that I would use now. Um, and it sort of dives into it for almost, you know, malevolent reasons. And what I'm fascinated by is that journey of going from cynicism and hopelessness to being hopeful and understanding that you really can make a difference. I think it's one of the things that people really emerge from in the movie is that, and we've showed it to a lot of students and a lot of young people, the idea that you don't think you have a voice. Well, you don't have a voice unless you start to speak. And for whatever reason you start to speak, you discover that you have a voice. And any single person can make a profound difference. It's not easy, you know, and these characters grow up, and it's funny a lot of the ways, but ultimately it's about growing up and going, I have a voice, and I'm going to use it. And the great relationship you have with Joel David Moore as well, that, you know, on screen, that was off screen as well with that on-set pranking you had. Tell me a little bit about that. <laughs> well, yeah, Joel, Joel, and I, Joel and I had a great time. Uh, the, there's one prank in particular that just took on this life. He would like, he, he, he set traps for me. He called, he's like, I trapped you. So this would range from any, it would be like when I would, he would like, tr he would like rig these traps when I like opened a door or something. So he'd be like, he'd call me like at the hotel, it'd be at the hotel. It'd be like, hey man, come up to my room for a drink before we go to dinner. I'd be like, okay. And I'd go up and he's like, I left a door unlocked, you know, I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I opened the door and literally his, the whole couch from his room is like leaning against the door. But then like on top of the couch is like the desk chair. On top of the desk chair is like shampoo. And he's filming it the whole time. Shampoo bottles, like ran, like it, it ranged in size. And I open the door and everything just kind of falls on, but not even that well, it just kind of like falls off to the side. And he films it and we just die in laughter. But then we just kept up with it. And so it would be like, he would do it at the trailer. Like, and, you know, he'd be like, He'd be filming me, he'd be like, hey, what are you doing, Jason? I'm like, I'm going to the trailer, man. I'm going get to take, get a little nap. And he'd be like, okay. <laughs> and like, I'd open the door and a cushion would come down on me. I mean, but it would range in size. Sometimes it'd just be like one, like, you know, sh a, a Coke can would fall down or something. <laughs> anyway, he would set traps for me. This was a running thing. And then, by the way, you can go to grassrootsthefilm.com. I think that's what it is here, isn't it? It's... it's and you can, yeah, yeah, and you can see all these pranks. I mean, we have hundreds of videos, and I think it's one of the things that also I love more and more about the world of media, which is just the whole internet, web, you know, YouTube world, which we use constantly. Because again, it's very grassroots. Mm -hmm. you know, so all these pranks, and also Cedric the Entertainer, there's some hilarious things yep. with him <laughs> that are on the website, so you can see those there. Yeah. Yeah.